Welcome everyone, my name is Henrik Hinsen. I'm an analyst here at ABG. With me now I have the CFO of iTech, Magnus Hegenell, here to answer some questions about the company uh, which I have um, thought about uh, in the past few days. So uh, maybe you could just start by giving us uh, a brief introduction to, to iTech and maybe yourself as well. Yeah. I would love to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you very much for hosting me here today. Uh, it's going to be fun to talk about iTech. iTech, uh, we are a small company in uh, Gothenburg, small in the name of um, manpower, but large in, in the sort of the spread around the world. Uh, iTech is focusing on uh, commercializing fully uh, towards the global paint industry, a, a product called Selectope, which in short, repels or almost all barnacles of a ship, which then reduces cost of drag, which reduces carbon dioxide. Mm. Uh, myself, I'm a uh, CFO by training, I almost say, but, but no, but I'm a professional CFO. I've been doing that role for quite some uh, startups, uh, four startups now, I think. This is the fourth one. Uh, brought two of them into the First North market change and uh, I really love growing companies. Then this is uh, probably a good company for you uh, yeah, at the moment so. because uh, as you know uh, I think had a, a really good year uh, in uh, 2023 uh, you grew uh, quite a bit uh, however before we get into the long-term uh, story and uh, hopefully continued growth there in in Q4 revenue dropped a bit uh, yes. compared to earlier quarters and uh, I was just wondering if you could comment on that what drove that how should investors think about that yeah uh, that's a very good question uh, and but I, I first of all I think we should think about what a tremendous year 2023 was uh, with, with a 45 percent increase in, in in top line of course Q4 compared to Q1 to Q3 was a little bit worse uh, we dropped some in sales, but we had a really nice Q3. We had lovely Q1 and Q2, and you can't have that uh, sort of uh, turn of a growth all uh, mm. quarters, all the time. We want to have it, but we can't have it. So uh, we will have growth this year as well. So I, I think uh, focus on what's coming. Mm. That's that's my advice to the yeah. investors. Not not so much about Q4. Yeah, well, I, I guess the the question that investors ask themselves because your growth had been so nice and yeah. smooth before Q4, I, I guess they're wondering if there was anything in particular in Q4 that causes, or if we can just expect a bit more uneven growth going forward. I think we can uh, expect uneven growth. Yeah. It, it will go up and down, and I think Philip has talked about that in uh, numerous of our quarterly calls, that it will go up and down. Mm. But I think we should focus, as I said, we will have growth 2024 as well. Maybe not as tremendous growth as we had 2023, but there will be growth, and we will grow it by profitability. Mm. And uh, you, you mentioned some of the extra costs. Yes, we had some extra costs. Uh, some of the cost was uh, due to the uh, EU issue that we mm. are discussing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> most likely discuss it even further later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but also we've made a quite a good uh, investment into work to, to start up a new uh, manufacturer mm. down in India. Yeah, so could you maybe tell us a bit more about that? You, you, you mentioned in the report that you're looking into to potentially increasing uh, the growth margin uh, going forward. What, what potential yeah, do you see that and, and how's it going? I'm not going to talk about exact numbers, but, but uh, the main reason we, we are doing this uh, work down in India with, with the new supply is that we see that there are a potential. When, when we calculate on the raw material cost, what production should cost, etc. We see that there is a potential to further reduce the cost of production mm -hmm. for us, mm -hmm. which we also have proven with this new supplier. So we are in a situation where we can uh, reduce production cost and increase cost margin in that part. On the other hand, we, we also know that we, as Shuguk already have a good price, but, but uh, once we grow with our customer, th there will be scale effects mm -hmm. also on the customer side, which will push down a little bit, but in, uh, in total, it should have a quite nice positive effect in the long run mm. for the company. Yeah, well, let's hope so.
Uh, but uh, looking then at 2024, uh, you expect growth, as you said, yeah. but we, we also expect some, uh, some interesting events, hopefully, to yeah. take place. First, we have the EU regulatory process where we're expecting some kind of announcement um, in, during the year. Uh, and then also you have uh, previously mentioned that there are some potential product launches uh, in the yes. pipeline <clears throat> this year. Could you talk about those two things, uh, yes. what's going on there? If we start with the EU uh, issues that we have, we are now in, in the face of stepping into the working group committees uh, of the EU, where you have specialties from, from all the EU countries that are discussing the different matters. Uh, one is toxicity, mm -hmm. endocrine disruption, etc., which we are coming back to. So uh, these working groups will have a result during the spring, uh, mm -hmm. and hopefully, I say hopefully because we know they should have a response by May, June to us on their standpoint. And then in May, June, we have then, I think, two ways. Either they say, they, either they revise their opinion and say, well, this should be approved. Then we have the fast line into approval by fall. But mm. <coughs> more likely, maybe, I think, uh, I don't know the likelihood of they changing uh, directly now, but then we're going into uh, a socio-economic analysis where we have 60 days to produce such a report and then EU have roughly a year to discuss it and mm. to decide upon if they should think about the socio-economic impacts as well before they make the final decision. So, yeah, might come a positive answer, may mm. do, and then we have a short. Yeah, well... Let's see. Uh, it seems at least like there are multiple avenues uh, to get this sorted in ITEC's favor. Yes. However, uh, if uh, the case were that you did not get renewed approval uh, in the EU, uh, I'm just wondering if you could comment on what that would actually mean for ITEC, considering that around 90% of your sales are in Asia and uh, the European market uh, for your product is, is really quite small mm. in comparison mm. to Asia. Yeah, and we shouldn't forget to come back to the other customers, which I yes, more, right. more likely would like to talk about. But the direct effects would be that we lose 10% of mm. the revenues, mm. of course. What will happen with this, I, I don't know, uh, it could be the case that all of these uh, repaintings move to Asia as well. So we actually don't lose anything. Mm. Uh, we don't know that. Uh, but to be honest, we probably we lose 10% of the revenues, mm. which is... It's bad, but it's not uh, tremendously bad. But, and then I think we, we have two parts moving forward. Either we have a situation where almost all the biocides uh, have some issues. Uh, there are examples of biocides that, that, that are in the kind of phase that uh, ITEC is in, where, where they are sort of, the recommendation is to, to ban them. Mm. But they've been in that phase for seven years now, seven, eight years. Mm. And they don't drop anything in revenues. They, they actually increase because the paint manufacturers realize that they need to have this. Mm. And that could be also the, be the case with ITEC. And it's likely if, if everyone is under pressure, so to speak, it's likely that we continue to sell and continue to grow mm. with it. The more unlikely event is that ITEC and Selector will be the only uh, Biocide that will sort of get in the cross tar, crossbar. Mm, uh, mm. And then there are more trouble. Yeah. I, I, I can't specify how, how much more, but, but that is very unlikely, course, I would say. Of course. Yes. But All coming right. back to the yes. customers, uh, yes, Philip has talked about quite a lot that, that we have two potential new uh, customers that with product launches mm -hmm. the coming six to 18 months, something like that. And we are uh, more and more convinced that <laughs> there will be launches. Uh, most likely, uh, there will be a launch during the spring uh, with the new customer, with, with the global, uh, global paint mm -hmm. that they will launch. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that, uh, it, it will not come up to, to Shuguko volumes directly, but hopefully there will be some uh, contribution as well. Mm. The, the second one, uh, let's wait and see. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Hopefully we will could announce that as well. All right, but well, uh, I can't promise anything. I'll keep an eye out uh, yeah. for the press release yeah. then uh, when it comes. Um, but 
to dive down a, a bit deeper in the, in the market and your, your customers. Yes. It's quite a concentrated market. There are, there are a few large players which, which dom dominate uh, uh, most of the market here. Uh, and your main customer, Shiguku, of course, as you mentioned, it is currently a, they currently contribute a very high portion of your revenues. Yes. Um, you do have uh, two other custom customers with active uh, products on the market, uh, if I'm not misremembering at the moment. It, could you just explain uh, what made Shogoku grow so quickly and, and, and what's needed to, to make other co customers start growing uh, at that kind of mm. pace uh, with your product? I think uh, one of the reasons why, why Shoguku is a, is a large part of our, our sales is that they started very early. They, they betted on that we would get an approval. Mm. So they actually had a, a product on the market already in 2016 when we received the EU approval. Mm. None of the other ones were, were close to that at that time. Mm. And they, they built the technology around the Selectope. So they already from the beginning uh, did a lot of work in, in including Selectop and take the main benefits of it, mm. i.e. removing barnacle fouling uh, on, on the ships. So uh, that is one, th th they have really early betted on it. And the other ones, th they are betting on it uh, and they, they are developing around it, but things take time. Mm. <laughs> and actually we, we, we do have six of the nine largest customers are customers today. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so well, uh, you, there, there are some different you know, lines between uh, yes. what yeah. what level yeah. of customer yeah. 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 Th they yeah. are with yeah. you, uh, but yeah, um, all right. So um, you're positive on the market there, but uh, it takes time. It takes uh, time for customers yeah. to really start but but ramping but up. With yeah, I, I really hope that that we could start to communicate so, some some real progress during this year. Mm either with the second largest one that, that are competing a little bit with Shiguk or any of the new ones yeah. hopefully that, that are actually picking up volumes all right, all right. which we actually could see in the PNL as well yeah not the small one very interesting all right um, in Q4 uh, you also uh, announced your first dividend uh, yes uh, so that's probably uh, a welcome, uh, maybe not surprise, but uh, welcome news to, uh, to, to investors. Uh, yeah. But but even after paying this dividend, y your balance sheet uh, still looks quite strong. Yeah, uh, I would say. Uh, could you just uh, explain what went into the decision of uh, starting to pay this dividend? What the plan is going forward mm. with dividends and. and how you're thinking about uh, the remaining part of your balance sheet? Uh, well, are there any new avenues you're looking to explore mm. organically with the company or are there any M&A opportunities you're looking at? Uh, what are the thoughts there on capital allocation? There were a lot of questions in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will try to start. Uh, first of all, dividends. Yeah. Uh, uh, dividends or not dividends. Uh, that has been the question for quite, quite some time now, actually, because we have, we ha have a lot of cash uh, in the accounts and have had it for, for quite some time as well. But I, I think uh, it's a little bit of showing our belief in the company and the belief of a continuous growth with profitability that, that, that we actually took the decision or to recommend, well, mm. the board took a decision to recommend to the annual meeting that we should have a dividend. I don't uh, anticipate that, that it won't go through, but, but <laughs> uh, and, and I think it is a proof that, that both management and board really believes that we are on a level with the company where we can start to share directly with, with our investors and mm. also to attract uh, maybe a different kind of investors as well, the yeah. more direct uh, uh, investors. And then the second part, we will, what will happen in the future? Well, of course, we wouldn't introduce a dividend scheme unless we believe that we can continue. Well, you should never do that on, as a one-time effort. Yeah. And that, that is also the reason why we divided it into two parts now, one with the ordinary dividend and one with the, an extra dividend. Yeah. Uh, and where we, I think we should anticipate that the ordinary dividend will be in the range uh, of what we saw, mm. 40 to 60% uh, of the annual profit yeah. somewhere mm -hmm. there. And if we deem it unnecessary to, to keep the, the remaining part, of course, we can take a decision for even further extra dividends because we have too much cash just to run the business. Yes, mm. we do that. 
but we also are looking into opportunities to, to actually actively grow, to invest in and grow in the company. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will use, uh, during this year, we will use with these new suppliers uh, some additional uh, funds in working capital, but nothing that will jeopardize uh, the cash balance in the company. All right. Uh, finally, then, uh, your longtime uh, CEO, uh, Philip, uh, has uh, chosen to, to leave his uh, post as CEO here. Uh, could you just briefly comment on what uh, led to this decision and uh, how the, the work is going to find a new CEO? What are you looking for there? How yeah. do you think it will affect uh, iTech going <coughs> forward? Yes, uh, once again, a lot of questions. Uh, and once again, it's quite a hard question to, to answer uh, because I, I can't really pick Philip's brain. Uh, and why does he take the decision right now? But I, I know Philip since uh, many years. We've yeah. been working together before iTech as well. And, and uh, he wants to, to develop both companies and himself. And right now he feels that it's a good timing if we're going to do another assignment. Well, we're. We're young, but we, we won't get younger. So, so <laughs> he want to give some time to, to uh, yet another assignment uh, during his career. Th then it was a good timing. And also everything in combination that he could then stay within iTech, because I, I think that that is the really important for, for our customers mm. mainly, that he actually has an active role still in the company. Because you know Japanese yes, people, chairman, right, they, yeah. they don't like the, the change. And mm. He will stay as a chairman, yeah. and th that is actually promotion uh, for him. <laughs> but yeah, true, it is the true. CEO's boss. So, yes. uh, yeah. uh, and given the the, uh, the the recruitment, I don't have all insights in it. I know that the, we have hired a, a recruitment firm. They are scanning the market mm. for for potential. Uh, I think they're halfway through the scanning. I think. Some uh, some uh, names are mm. popping up, I guess. Yeah. But I, I think, t I in short, what we look uh, upon mainly is uh, we have been discussing this a little bit broader uh, focus of, of uh, iTech, where we look into a little bit more about the specialty chemistry mm. business. Where, where can we find yet another substances that we can promote or develop with, within the marine? Uh, application areas and uh, it, it is what we are looking for in that case is a, a, a CEO with the connections into this special chemistry mm -hmm. area yeah. or otherwise we, we, we need to, to sort of bring that competence into the company and maybe as a business developer or mm -hmm. something like that but uh, that, that's the main focus. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. I think that's all we have uh, time for today. Uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you. Bye-bye.